Nowadays, I feel like I'm filming a lot of behind the scenes content, mainly filming me using, you know, more expensive bits of gear with my main cameras. When this got announced, I looked at the spec and it looked like it could be a really nice, tidy, capable little package that's gonna allow me to get those behind the scenes shots and vlogs very, very quickly and easily without, you know, spending too much money. I think at launch it's around about the 760 pounds mark, which isn't a whole lot of money if you're considering that this is a complete system. Now, I've got this camera for the next few days. I've got BB tomorrow, so I'm gonna take it around there as well. Um, before we do that though, actually, randomly, we've got sun here in the UK. I've realized I've not got the right step up filter for my ND filter, so we're just gonna nip around the corner to the Whitechapel Wex store, pick that up. Whilst I do that, here are some specs. But just before I show you those specs, if you're interested in the photography side of this camera, Amy will do a separate video talking about that. This one is just gonna be about the video side. Let's get to it. The FZ1000 Mark II is a hybrid bridge camera, looking to be the ideal choice for those who want something simple and straightforward to use for both photography and for filming. At, let's face it, a pretty competitive price. It's got a one inch 20 megapixel sensor at its heart, and that's paired with a 25 to 400 mil Leica lens. So focal range should never really be an issue with this camera. And to be fair, considering the amount of range that you do get with it, you know, it is pretty compact. Bit of a shame that it doesn't have a constant aperture. It's f2.8 at its widest and f4 at its longest. So it's by no means slow. You know, it is perfectly fine still. So in terms of the video recording spec, we've got UHD 4K at up to 30 frames per second, 1080p at up to 60 frames per second, and if you switch over into the high frame rate mode, where no sound is recorded, you can up that 60 frames per second to 120. On the body, you've got 13 customizable function buttons, so you can really personalize this camera to just how you like to shoot. It's got a respectable OLED EVF and a three inch swivel touchscreen. So from a vlogging point of view, you know, it's got a one inch sensor, which yeah, it might seem small if you're shooting on DSLRs, but in terms of other popular vlogging cameras, you know, it's probably bigger. You've got a big focal range to work with. It's stabilized. You've got 4K, you've got slow motion possibilities there, that swivel touchscreen and a microphone input. Okay, so we got the step up ring, losing the light a bit now, so we're gonna head on the DLR, get over to Canary Wharf and stay tonight, go get some food and get some shots and I'll talk about the camera a bit more. So I've just been getting some time lapse shots. Now it's one of the things I really like about the Lumens cameras, they do make it in time lapses really easy and straightforward to do. Um, you know, especially if you're vlogging, what's nice with these cameras is that, you know, they'll convert those pictures and make it into a 4K video for you. So, you know, when you're looking for a quick turnaround, just drop that footage straight into your timeline. Hey, press here, you've got your time lapse for that and to edit those individual pictures. So before I was actually mic'd up, my mic's died now. So we're actually using the internal mic of this camera so you can get an idea of how it sounds. I don't expect good things, but hey ho, we'll see. What's interesting is that the body on this camera has a 3.5mm microphone input, so they are clearly aware of sound, uh, but no headphone out. So, although you can put microphones in, you can't hear what you're actually doing. You've just got to kind of rely and hope that, you know, it's all okay. So yeah, it's a bit of a guessing game. See how it sounds, make your, uh, make your mind up what you think. Well, whilst it's dark, we can see how this thing performs in low light. And because it's a one inch sensor, yeah, you know what? It's not gonna be great. These were all shot 3200 ISO in 4K in the standard picture profile. And I'd say they're just about usable. It's never gonna be a strong point to this camera. But you know, at least with a one inch sensor, you can still get some nice bokeh. It is another beautiful day here in London and in the UK, which is very odd. Cause like I said, it is February. This is very out of the ordinary. It feels like it's summer already. I'm sure we'll pay for it soon with loads of rain. But anyway, we'll just buy the XL. It's over there in the distance. You can't really see it from this angle if I go like this. You can sort of see it's over there. We're getting a bit blown out. But I just wanted to talk about the, the lens on this thing. Now, of course, it's 25 mil to 400 mil lens, and that is a really big sort of focal range to cover. Just to show you an example now of how it looks, this is at 25 mil and this is at 400 mil. So you can see you've got a massive focal range to work with there. I think one of my issues with bridge cameras is that I hate the idea of not being able to change my lens. 
But if you're looking at this system, you know, from the point of view that you want something that's just gonna be a quick tool to get those shots, then having that focal range to work with, you know, you don't really need that much more. Now, there is one sort of caveat, one sort of big trip up that, you know, is a bit of an issue. And that is, when you're filming in 4K on this camera, there is a slight cropping. So that 25 mil in 4K suddenly becomes 37 mil, which for most things, you know, you can work around, but for vlogging, which is the reason I got this camera, it is a bit tricky and it, you know, to, to get those shots of your face without it being too close. So right now, we're filming in 4K and we're at 37 mil. I'm gonna pause it and switch to HD and you can see the difference. And now we're in full HD, 25 mil, so no crop. And obviously you can see there's a massive difference there. You know, it, it's very annoying that it's got that 4K crop. I, you kind of want us to move away from that with the new cameras that we get. You know, for vlogging, filming yourself, it is a bit of an issue. You can always switch down to HD and upscale it, which is what I've done for this shot, of course. Um, but it's just something to be aware of, you know. If you've got very short arms, then prepare for some very close close-ups of your face if you're vlogging. To try and put like a positive spin on that is that, you know, that 25 to 400 mil lens, yeah, it's harder to get wider shots in 4K, but at least you've got an increase at the longer end. So instead of 400 mil equivalent, it then goes up to 597 or 592 mil. I can't remember off the top of my head. Nearly 600 mil. So you know, you do gain an extra 200 mil at the longer end. You're probably thinking, yeah, it's great that I can shoot at 600 mil, fantastic. But you know, how usable is that at 600 mil if you're shooting handheld, which let's face it, a lot of vlogging is. Um, you know, it's all about getting that shot quickly and easily. Well, this camera's got five axis image stabilization, which means that the sensor's stabilized, but also the optics, the glass is stabilized too. So at 600 mil handheld, I found it to be actually pretty usable. Yeah, you've got to be steady, but you know, you're at 600 mil, so of course you have. But I mean, I don't think I've used any other interchangeable lens camera that will allow me to shoot handheld at 600 mil and get this sort of footage. So I've got a bit of time to kill, you know, I've got about an hour before BB starts and, you know, since I'm getting some shots at Emirates Skyline, I thought, why not go on it? And, you know, I lived in London for like six years and I've never actually been on this thing and it's weird because I'm the only one that appears to be on it. Now I've got to say, when you're filming outside, you know, when low light isn't an issue, this camera, the images it makes, I think are generally quite pleasing. Now, of course, I'm shooting through a lot of glass on this cable car, so you are going to get some weird artifacts, and of course, we are recording in an 8-bit compressed format, so, you know, it is what it is, but I think, you know, generally, it looks quite good. Well, that's it, my flight is over. Wasn't that just delightful, beautiful weather for it? So, yeah, if you're in the area, you've got a spare tenner, you know, why not use it on a 15-minute cable cart ride back to the same destination that you were uh, started in. Anyway, let's go to BV. Now before I went into BV, I just wanted to do a very quick test. When I was filming in HD before, I noticed that there was some vignetting going on. You eagle-eyed viewers may have already spotted this before, and that is basically the in-body stabilization. In HD, there's no crop, so you can see it on the edges when you're panning or moving the camera quite a bit, which is a bit of a shame, really, because you know, this lens has been designed to work with this camera. So, a bit annoying that we're getting some vignette in there. Also, there is quite a significant amount of rolling shutter, and there's a bit of moiré there if you look at the grills just below the windows. Now, in 4K, I think that the rolling shutter and the moiré is a bit worse, which is a bit of a bummer. But, you know, you've got to be realistic with this camera. It isn't a dedicated video camera. It is a hybrid camera that doesn't cost that much in the grand scheme of cameras, and it is probably more targeted towards photographers than it is for filmmakers. So, you know, you've just got to be realistic with these things. So looking at the footage that I got indoors at BVE, you know, comparing it to the night before, I do think the images are a bit cleaner. This time I didn't go over 1600 ISO. So I think really you kind of want to stay under that if this is a camera that you're interested in. Anything over it and it does start to fall apart. I've been filming all morning and I've only dropped one bar of battery. So just whilst we're waiting, uh, chilling out in the sunshine, just thought I'd show you and talk about the charging of this camera. Now, annoyingly, this is one of those cameras that doesn't come with a main charger um, in terms of like a dedicated battery charger out the box. Instead, it comes with a mains plug and a USB cable. And on the side of the camera, if I just open this flap, 
You've got a little port here. What you actually do is you charge the battery uh, within the camera. And what's nice about that is that I've got a little power bank here. Whilst I'm having a break, turn my power bank on and I can literally just top up that battery in the camera uh, and get it charging. So, I'm, you know, whilst I've got a bit of downtime, top that battery up and away we go. One thing I would note though, that I've noticed, is that on the grip side of this camera, obviously I'm holding it like this, that's where your USB charging point is. That's also where the HDMI output is. So if you wanted to use an external monitor with this camera, you know, and you want to operate handheld, that's kind of a no-go, which is a bit of a shame. So one thing I really like about this camera is that it's got 13 customizable buttons on the body. Now, one of those buttons has sort of like a secondary nice feature about it. I say secondary, it's just another feature. But basically, it's called like Zoom Compose. So obviously, when I'm filming in 4K, it's about 600 mil focal range that we've got to work with. Now, if I'm zooming in all the way to 600 mil, if I press that button on the side of the, on the lens barrel, it will zoom out and it will tell me what is in frame, I let go of it again, and it will zoom back in again. So if you're filming something that is very far away, and you're zooming in, it's moving, you lose them in the frame, you press that button, jumps back out, release it, jumps back in, and you get it again. It's actually quite a nice feature to use. So one last thing that I wanted to try was the high frame rate mode. It does 120 frames per second in full HD, and this is the footage. For me, I just think it's a bit too mushy. It's falling apart a bit too much. And this is outdoors in bright sunlight, so you know, it's really probably not gonna get much better than this. Would I use this, you know, in my own projects? Probably not. I'd only use it if it's gonna be on screen for a very short period of time. So my audience doesn't have long enough to analyze what exactly is falling apart in the image. Another thing to note is that the stabilization does not work in this mode. I'm now back at my edit desk. I've had a look for all the footage and of course I've put this edit together for you guys to have a look at. I thought I'd just finish this sort of video with my sort of final thoughts of using the FZ1000 Mark II for the past couple of days. Now let's just jump straight in there with the big question, would I buy this camera, you know, for vlogging? Basically, you know, the whole point in this video. And I think the answer would be, I would need to be doing probably more photography um, than vlogging with this camera in particular for me to want to buy it. I think it's way more geared towards the photographer than it is the filmmaker. Yes, you know, headline specs are all there when it comes for filming. You've got 4K 30, five axis image stabilization, microphone input, silly screen, and yeah, you've got, you know, slow motion capabilities in full HD. But each of those sort of um, points does have a bit of a drawback. You know, 4K 30, yeah, you can do it. There's a bit of a crop in. Um, you know, full HD slow motion, yeah, you can do it. Doesn't look great. You know, five axis st stabilization. Yeah, it works great, but in HD at the wide end, you can see the actual stabilization. And also it doesn't work when you're doing the slow motion full HD stuff. So yeah, you know, it can do all of those things, but there's just one too many things that would put me off if I was solely buying this just for vlogging. Now, you know, if you're doing a mixture, then I can put up with those things because there's always going to be a trade-off with a hybrid camera. At the end of the day, it is, you know, a budget-friendly hybrid bridge camera. So, you know, be realistic, guys, on, on what you uh, expect to get out of it. There was one other thing that I noticed, actually, when filming with this camera towards the end of this sort of two days, and that is the autofocus in HD works a lot quicker than it does in 4K. Um, and I thought I was seeing a difference. And I checked the manual and it actually says it in there that that is a thing. So that's another thing to know. But you know, overall, if you're out and about filming in the bright outdoors, then I think that the 4K uh, footage is quite nice. If you're going in low light, and I mean, you know, nighttime shooting, it is gonna fall apart with it being a one inch sensor. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. If you've got any questions, do pop them in the comments. Give us a like if you like the video, you don't have to. Maybe even subscribe. If you already have, it's good to have you back with us. And I shall see you in the next one.